If you're here for improv, go away. This is Comedy and Improv with Anthony Francis. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Other Than Improv. I'm your host, Anthony Francis, and I am very excited to have our guest today that is with us because he is kind of a big deal, kind of a big deal. And, uh, you know, uh, he'll tell you that as well, but no, he's, he's a wonderful guy. He is an actor, a writer. He's known for, uh, Key and Peele, Happy Endings, The Weeds. He was in the very first Key and Peele recorded sketch. He's the voice of Fryman from Steven Universe. He's a UCB legend. He was in The Swarm, The Stepfathers. He's in The Smokes. But I know him, and we all know him, from The Chowder Report. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Billy Merritt. Hello. Welcome. Thank oh, you so much. Thanks for having me. I'm sorry. Well, thank Thanks you for, for having, having me. me to have you. It means so much. <laughs> and you're welcome. Uh, I do also want to say that I'm... Uh, I'm so glad that we get to do this because I got to meet you. You came down to South Florida. We got to, I was fortunate enough. I got to do a show with a uh, set with you and Casey Casperson down here from sick puppies. And it was just like so much fun. We got to, I don't know if you remember that we got to paint him. We were painting him together. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was, was a just fun scene. Yeah. That was so fun. And then ever since then, you've just been just such a super cool down to earth guy. And uh, I consider you a, a, a member of the improv community in South Florida, of course. So so thanks for doing that. Absolutely. It's where I got my start. The hub of great improv, West Palm <laughs> Beach, Florida. That People don't know that. They go, I'm moving to Chicago. I'm like, you got to move to West Palm oh, Beach. West Palm Beach. Clematis yeah. Street, man. That's right. That's where the that's improv right. is. So uh, this is other than improv where we talk about everything uh, outside of the improv world. You have been since the quarantine doing amazing work, truly the yes. important work. Yes. Of the Chowder Report. Please tell us what this is about. How did it start? Give us the E, True uh, Hollywood, or the soup, I guess. Would it be the soup? No. Give us the True uh, Hollywood story. The true, the true skinny. You know what? I, I guess I, with, it, it, the pandemic, there's nothing else to do but make chowder. Uh, uh, Correct. I had, I'll, I'll tell you where it started, where I really just fell in, I re-fell in love, rediscovered chowder. Uh, it was Edinburgh, Scotland last year. February, March, March. I did the Edinburgh Improv Festival. Uh, uh, let's see. Is it March? It was cold, so I don't know. Uh, I'm going to say it was March. Uh, February, March. It doesn't matter. Why am I wasting time talking about months? February. I'm, I'm going to edit all this February, out. February, March. In there, somewhere. Uh, uh, so I was there. Are you sure it was March? Are you no, sure? It was February. It was late. February. It was February. Are we sure? I just want to keep those having you yell out dates. Lie. Together, do those connect are those the same january february april march i think is how it goes oh then it wasn't february it was april march it was april okay march. april march and march. that's one month march. okay uh anyways uh uh i was in edinburgh and uh we did the festival uh myself and will hines were there and it was a lot of fun beautiful town never been there before and i had uh i was there for four days and i had an extra five days to explore uh and that's what i did and it's cold and rainy, and I'm not used to that being from uh, California. Uh, uh, so I found myself eating a lot of Scottish food, a lot of hearty Scottish food. And I fell in love with one particular thing because it had such a weird name. Cullen Skink. Cullen Skink? Oh, man, am I saying that right? Cullen Skink. Uh, it is a, a Scottish uh, uh, fish chowder. And it's usually smoked salmon or smoked fish. Uh, I've had it with cod, because uh, uh, I had it several times while I was there. And it's basically, if New England clam chowder got real good, that's, that's what would this, this would be. It's got potatoes and leeks and all sorts of this wonderful fish uh, uh, all mixed around. And every pub has their own version of it, every little place that you go to. Uh, some have just salmon, some have uh, oat, saltwater fish and uh, stuff like that. Uh, so I'm looking at a picture of it here. It looks delightful. And I, you are, I believe, saying it correctly. As it's written, it looks like Cullen's skink. Yeah. And of course, that's funny. Uh, so just <laughs> saying that out loud is fun. Uh, uh, so I had it like four or five times while I was there, different places, and it had its own personality. Uh, came home 
uh, for the pandemic because uh, uh, I like literally was on the last flight out of uh, London. It was like half full, uh, so it was just before lockdown. Uh, wow! Uh, so got home. It's all locked up, and uh, I was just jonesing for some chowder. Uh, uh, so I kept getting just really. I think my first chowder report was how disappointed I was in a can of New England clam chowder. Uh, and I think I said that. <laughs> chowder report, this is Billy Barrett. Add some New England clam chowder, nice and creamy. But as always, not enough clam. Uh, and that's always been my problem with it. They try, to, they try to throw potato in there like they're doing you a favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah what's that about? Yeah. Uh, uh, so I started exploring it a little bit more. I will say this. Uh, I got into it heavy uh, uh, as far as reporting it. Uh, but the truth of the matter is there's no way I made that much chowder and ate that much chowder, but I did a lot of research of that chowders. Uh, uh, and I've come up with this, uh, this little phrase that helps me out. If it's soup that you can chew, it's a chowder or a stew. And that's what I enjoy most. And of course, the end of that is uh, bisque can go fuck itself. Uh, okay. I, I believe that. I believe in a good hearty chowder, something you can chew and eat. Uh, and it could be a stew. The difference is chowder tends to be maybe seafood based, you know, uh, and it's either potato cream based or tomato based. Uh, like in Florida, you got your Bahamian chowder, mm -hmm. uh, which I love, which I guess is the R of uh, Florida's representation of uh, Manhattan clam chowder. Uh, right, uh, right. Like tomato based. Uh, started making a lot of chowders. Then it got hot here, it gotten up into the high hundreds and hot soups, not the time. No, that is not chowder weather. Yeah, so I kind of backed off, but now it's starting to cool down. And I was just telling you, uh, I was five minutes late because I was on the phone talking to some people. Uh, I had to get the bean report uh, at the farmer's market, what beans are there. Because I'm thinking of going to make a bean chowder this week. Now, I did stop you halfway through telling me that because I said, save this for the show. Yeah. yeah. So you are going to pick up some beans. What beans are you going to be purchasing today? Uh, uh, today's bean, Anthony, will be turtle beans. Turtle beans. Well, now, wait a minute. Hold on. I, of all the beans that I thought you were going to say, I had no idea you'd say turtle beans, and I've what never heard of that I before. Say? What bean did you I, think? You look at me in the eyes. Tell me what bean you think I'd want. What bean do I think you'd want? Yeah. I don't want to insult you, but the, the bean I had in mind was lima. No. Oh, I do love a good lima bean. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, I do. I was nervous. I do. This is a, it's a variation of the black bean. Uh, so it's okay. a little uh, white back to, it's a black bean with a little white back to it. So it looks like a little turtle, mm -hmm. uh, a little smaller, more compact, uh, but is a Latin American bean that's very popular. Uh, and I've heard of it, but I've never had it. Uh, and I was told if you make a black bean soup, turtle bean is your best bean. That's what I heard. Uh, so I'm going to give that a try. I'm going to try and go vegetarian and do a, uh, turtle bean, uh, I guess it's not a chowder unless, and this is what I heard, I looked it up, you take half the beans and mash them up, and then the other half you cook whole. So the mashed bean give it that thick, like, potatoy, chowdery feel. Mm -hmm. The whole bean, uh, what's great about these beans is the skin is thin, but the inside is creamy and yummy. Isn't that nice? I... Your passion for chowders and beans is rubbing off on me. It's really, it's, it's infectious. It's a good way to waste your time. Uh, uh, what else are you going to do in a pandemic except think, look up beans and chowders? You know, some people, they're baking <laughs> bread. Um, yeah, no. You know, uh, but, yeah. but, uh, uh, but no, chowder is really where it's at. And the yeah. beans, I'm, I'm really impressed with that. So the turtle bean for a black bean chowder. And would you post this recipe up? Could we get a copy of this? Could yeah, we possibly? I, I mean, I, it'll be this week sometime. Uh, you know what? I'll look something up now. Uh, I think it's just going to be a, a crock pot slow cook of beans. You know, I got to get those beans first. Uh, well, you have time. You know what I would recommend? I had a lima bean soup at Alabama Jack's in Key Largo. Uh, and I remember having it as a kid all the time. Uh, okay. My parents had a boat docked down there, like a little old scrubby wooden sailboat. Uh, and it was docked at this place called Alabama Jacks. Have you ever heard of this place? I think I've heard of it. Where Where yeah. is it? Down in... Like right at the gateway of Key Largo as you're going down the Keys. Yeah. Over the bridge. There's a place called Alabama Jacks. And it's a, just a 
nasty little road stop place, uh, but it's definitely now it's in and popular. Like all the motorcyclists stop there. It's a it's a big stopping point. Uh, but the food there is super good. I remember growing up having crab cake sandwiches and lima bean soup. Uh, and I went down there last time I was there last Christmas. Uh, I went down. I my mom and I took her down there. Drove her down to Key Largo. She didn't have a choice. Uh, and their uh, lima bean soup, still good. Got to say, I've never had it anywhere else. It's just like ham hocks, limes, and uh, lima beans and onions. Wow. So you're so you're making a vegetarian stew, but you're not vegetarian. You're not going vegetarian. No, no. Just happens to well, be okay. You, you talked about bread. I'm I've been trying to uh, diet a little. Right now, I'm just trying to maintain and not gain weight. Uh, hey, because, me too, brother. And that's a winning <laughs> proposition. Yeah, that's enough. So. Yeah, I still eat meat. Uh, I might have a little barbecue. I had some barbecue chicken last night. That was tasty. Uh, uh, made it myself. But it wasn't that tasty, but it was okay. Uh, uh, so, yeah, just trying to eat a little bit better as you get older. You realize, oh, I didn't have any meat today. And you know what? I'm okay for it. <laughs> uh, so, it's not like I, I search for it, but I'm also not bothered by it. I think in my younger years, oh, i got to have meat. Protein. Got to have protein. Right. I, you know, I've, I, yeah, I've started to get away from that too. I'm like, look, if I don't have meat today, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world no, if we don't. No. You don't have You got to. a good bean. Yeah. A nice piece of fish. Uh, something like that would be good. Uh, I've had some, I was almost considering changing this because during the heat wave here, I switched over from chowders and really got creative with my salads. Uh, thinking of doing salad report. Uh, mm. And I just, uh, it's hard to, st- I'm not there yet. Uh, but I love making a good salad. Uh, I'm amazed. I love a salad, and I will tell you that there's a recipe for salad dressing. It's an oil and uh, vinegar-based dressing that my mom taught my wife, who, through literally just over-the-shoulder training, um, there is no recipe, and my wife now has the gift it is amazing. It's mostly garlic. I could tell you, I would, I would share it with you because it is a dressing, or maybe I'll send some to you. Yeah, it's the greatest thing in the world. It, is it yeah. like whole chopped garlic, garlic, olive oh yeah, oil and vinegar, uh, garlic, olive oil, onion powder, just tons of chopped garlic, chives maybe. I, I don't even know what's in, but it makes this dark sediment at the bottom, and you just mix it up and you put it, and I can oh, just sure. eat it forever. Yeah, eat it forever yeah. that sounds good i something like that with uh red wine vinegar i use garlic powder not chopped garlic but capers uh i've fallen in love with capers uh hard mm-hmm. uh which is weird because i hate olives love capers uh, I'm, I'm complicated I, I don't know uh so i'll put that in my dressing uh to spark it up a little bit but that sounds good yeah send me that recipe yeah i'll, I'll try i don't know if i can <laughs> But it's, oh, you don't know if you're like, oh. No, I don't know if, I don't know, I don't know what it is. It's literally in her mind and it's kind of a, a, a pinch here and there. But we, I don't know if we're allowed to write it down. I don't know what would happen. Yeah. I don't know oh, if the ghosts of my ancestors like, will come no, back. No, no, you pass it down. You don't write that stuff down. It doesn't, it's not the same. It's not the uh, same. Yeah. You no, know what? Can I tell you about salad? The thing that really changed my life this uh, past month is I finally did it and I ordered a salad spin. And it has gotten me away from bagged salads uh, uh, that I always have all the time. Uh, And it's gotten me into buying leafy greens, like going to the farmer's market, buying leafy greens and throwing it all in the salad spinner and uh, all the work that it takes. That stuff that I used to didn't have time for and hated, but because I have nothing else to do, I love spinning a good salad. That's, you Uh, know, the the time that we have now... I think it's the same with me. I've gotten into pasta making and making Ooh. pastas. I love the time it takes. Ooh, yeah. I, I love that. Of you making that pasta. That looks oh. good. Oh, it's that good. Now it looks good. Before it was, yeah. it started out gray. It was weird. It was gray. It was awful. You change up the flavor. It's all about that semolina, 100% semolina. Don't cut it. Don't do 80 20 semolina white flour. Get that white flour out of here. Never touch it. It's 100% semolina. Was it? Did you find it to be a bit of a trial and error, or did it just make it easy the first time? No, no, it was hard the first time. It was gross yeah. the first time, yeah. uh, and it was painful to make. My back hurt. <laughs> I I was not, but it's all technique. You take yeah. the time, and that's another thing I learned from it was that when you try something new, the first time you do it, it's going to be bad. 
but you keep at it and slowly you get better and better. And now I enjoy that process. What is your, what is your, your favorite salad, uh, to make you're talking, you're saying making new salads. Yeah. You know what? I, uh, um, well, I, I told you, yeah, I think I said something about making chicken. I, I cook a big uh, uh, batch of chicken for the week. So oh, we do that, too. We have yeah. a chicken in the oven right now. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, nice. right now. Like a whole chicken? A whole chicken. Oh, classy. Man, you guys are classy Freddy Blassies. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I have a whole bunch of chicken breasts uh, that I cooked up yesterday, and I'll make mm-hmm. salads with that. Uh, uh, a tuna. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't made. You know what? My mom does this. Bless her heart. Uh, she'll make a, a salad nichois, which is like a uh, whole tuna. Uh, Saute that up with uh, new potatoes, string beans, uh, Ooh, lettuce, yeah. balsamic vinaigrette, and it's all plate, plated very nicely. Uh, so that, or just like a, just honestly, a good Greek salad. Uh, uh, it's yeah. the cheese. It's the cheese yeah. I like. I don't like black ol- black olives or green peppers, but besides that, everything else in a Greek salad I love. I've always found the the peppers to be a little strange for me in yeah. that salad, but well, but I dive peppers. in. I dive in. Yeah. yeah, green peppers are an abomination. I mean, yeah. I, I love all peppers, but green peppers. Uh, oh, the like dark green pepper, like a green yeah, pepper. Bell peppers. Bell peppers. Yeah. yeah, no green green bell peppers. They are not ready yet. They're red and yellow peppers that aren't ready, and we should leave them alone. I agree with you. That's where that's from. I believe they are. I believe they're just fresher or or, or not as ripe yellow and red peppers. Yeah, yeah. They just have a bad flavor. Yeah, hate it. Not a big fan. Yeah. Don't even want it in my Philly cheesesteak. Nope. I can always get it. Mushrooms, onions, provolone. That's my uh, Philly cheesesteak right there. You're a good man. The provolone. That's yeah, good. I gotta, I'm, a, I'm a provolone man. Uh, yeah. I got to say that. Uh, provolone cheese, uh, uh, feta cheese for salads, brie. Always have a brick of brie in the house. Got to have a yeah. wheel or two. A wheel yeah. or two of brie. Uh, and I don't let anybody else know this, but I secretly enjoy craft uh, 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 single deli American cheese slices. Okay. Thick slices, not the processed cheese one that you have to peel separately. Oh, okay, okay. I think it's, yeah, it's Kraft Deli cheese, Deli American cheese. So um, the thing about uh, the that, that, that cheese-like product, that single Kraft, you know when I like that? I like that on a breakfast sandwich. If yeah. I'm making eggs and yeah, toast, absolutely. I'm going to put a slice of American cheese on there because, I yeah, I like Swiss and I like that, like sometimes I'll do like an yeah. omelet with Swiss, but yeah. if we're talking about that breakfast sandwich that breakfast sandwich has to have that american cheese on it that that does yeah. something for me i don't know if everyone there, feels that I way but that's for that. me no you know what that's so funny I, I i don't know if we were talking about this before on npr uh, uh evan Kleiman has a show called good eats uh, mm-hmm. uh and within that there's a segment called the market report uh <laughs> where there's another correspondent that goes to the farmer's market and talks to a different farmer each week it's just that's how i learned about turtle beans uh that's why i'm going to pick up those turtle beans uh but this lady makes a breakfast burrito uh, uh a bean and cheese burrito not even for breakfast but she has it for breakfast mm-hmm. uh, and it's like the the big thing at this farmer's market so it's very she she uh, and she uses turtle beans like i said black beans uh, half mushed and refried, half whole, uh, onions, cilantro, and American cheese. Uh, uh, right. You hear Evan Kleiman go, oh, <laughs> it's like, no, it works. It it's works. It's got a place. It's got a place. It, it, yeah. It's like, uh, it's, uh, function, functionally, functionally. Functional. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, uh, it's a good way to keep things all together and still have that cheesy flavor. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a structural cheese. It's a structural cheese. Yeah, yeah. It it gels, uh, it, or not gels, but it, yeah, it melts real good. And it, when yeah. it melts, it melts like all through everything. And it's exactly. And it's rich too. It's got like a rich flavor. Oh, I, I mean, you know, we can't we can't snub our nose. Yeah. At uh, everything has its place. I think. Oh yeah, I open up my fridge. I look in there, and I think I'm trying to eat healthy. I've been doing the uh, Mediterranean diet, so everything fresh and healthy. Mm-hmm. I still have five to six different kinds of cheese. 
uh, uh, it's a success if I cannot have Brie in the house, but I always have Brie in the house. It's, uh, Brie is so good. Yeah. Uh, tell myself, you know what? I'll have some cheese, crackers, and celery and hummus, and that will be my dinner. And then I've eaten a pound of brie. You know? <laughs> okay. Well, we're coming up on the end. I wanted, uh, I just have a couple other questions for you. Um, so, on top of, first of all, I didn't know that we were going to be, I didn't know we were going to hit it off so well with food. We could talk about food forever. I mean, it's already, uh, it's already been 20 minutes. Like, yeah, I could talk to you about food. I got lots to say. We got lots to do. Well, let's start a new podcast. Let's we're, do well, I do for, a yeah. report, and I did have a podcast called Make That Sandwich a few years back. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, it's a, uh, we don't, well, it's a long game. Uh, it's a game we came up with in the green room where everybody in the green room has to guess what one person would eat, what kind of sandwich they would eat. Mm -hmm. uh, so we go around in a circle. And each person goes, so like, uh, I remember doing this once, one very specific time. Stepfathers, we were in a green room. Uh, 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 Zach Woods, this is, let's decide what sandwich Zach Woods would eat. And we all, what do we know about Zach Woods? He's a vegetarian, yeah. He's a little squirrely, yeah. So, we'll start with a piece of bread. Marble rye. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's pretty. And you go back and, and forth. And you just build it. Looking at the person and you judge. <laughs> and we made this for him. We made this perfect uh, grilled eggplant, red roasted red pepper sandwich with avocados and all this stuff. Like this beautiful sandwich. Then we turn to him and you have to be honest. It's like, would you or would you not eat that sandwich? And he paused and went, I would not eat that sandwich. What? <laughs> I hate avocados. I hate avocado on bread. I don't know why. And it's like, uh, uh, you really find out about the people you work with when you decide what kind of sandwich you think they would eat and what that turn, what they would eat and what they honestly wouldn't eat. Uh, that sounds like a, a TV crime procedural TV show. The yeah, guy who can pick what people eat, what, what, what sandwich, kind of sandwich they Yeah, yeah. I know what kind of sandwich you would eat. <laughs> it's a sandwich profiler. FBI, Sa sandwich yep, profile. yep, sandwich profile. Look, we don't have anything on this case. I don't know what to do. Look, who's this guy? Who is this guy you brought in? All right, I don't know who this guy. Look, yeah. just let him work. Just let him work. Uh, oh, we didn't even get into bird watching. Let me ask you about bird watching before we, we end this thing. Mm -hmm. So tell me, you also mentioned on top of the chowder report also some bird watching. Yeah. What is that about? What's going on there? Uh, it's a chance to go into the woods by yourself and sit and be quiet. That's what I've realized. Uh, uh, What's so great about that? Why would you do such a thing? Why would I be quiet in the woods? Yeah, what what, what do you get out of that, buddy? Uh, I think it's called meditation, my friend. Uh, huh. Huh. Being one with nature. Uh, uh, it's actually, for me, it gives me a reason to be out there. Because if not, I get bored. But if at least I'm looking for birds. Uh, I think I got into it in Boy Scouts as a kid. Uh, to get my one a merit badge was just, let's look at birds. And it became competitive. Because uh, competitive bird watchers are, are trying to catch as many birds as possible. I'm not competitive. I'm more, I just enjoy a good bird. Uh, I will say this. Uh, I have a very strong opinion about uh, California bird watching versus Florida bird watching. Uh, not a fan of California birds. Uh, uh, they're all, because it's a desert climate, uh, a lot of the birds here are brown based. Uh, they're just not colorful. Uh, where especially in South Florida, you get yourself some pretty looking birds. Oh, yeah. Uh, bizarro birds, you know, just like the Rosie Spoonbill was the one that blew me away. Uh, it looks like a flamingo, but it has a spoon bill, mm. uh, a long, thin bill with a spoon flavor. At, flavor or shape? No, it's a shape. It's a shape. Uh, right. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, I think I know that bird. Yeah. So every time I go down to Florida and I go down two to three times a year trying to, uh, I'll always hit the, was it with Licucci? Loxahatchee, Everglades, all these, Green Cove, uh, all these places in South, in Palm Beach County. I, I'm actually going to, um, I'm going to one with my sister. We just talked about it. Yeah. She takes photos of birds. I have to send you some of these photos. You will yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, I was amazed at the pictures she got. And also down here, whenever you go bird watching, good chance of catching alligators. Oh, yeah. Alligators are right near the birds. They're all yeah. right there. And if you're lucky, you see one eating one. Uh, right. One the other, yeah. Uh, I try. I have a, a camera. I thought I'd get into it, but it's an expensive hobby. 
Oh, the uh, lenses. Yeah. No, yeah, no, the don't. Lenses alone. And it, it becomes addictive because you'll take one shot and you go, that's great. I can do better. <laughs> uh, and now you're $2,000 into lenses. And it's like, all right, I'll just sit back and enjoy the nature. That's what I go for. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. I, I really need to do more of that. I did a rite of passage when I was younger where you're out in the woods for an undisclosed amount of time, but a long time. And I, I will never forget it. And it was probably one of the most moving moments of my life. When you say rites of passage, was this something you did on your own? Were you forced out there or what? I was with a group. I was with a program from school uh, for troubled youth. I wasn't, I wasn't a troubled youth. I actually, I actually kind of forced my way into the program because I got to go yeah. camping. And I just, I that, was dying that to go. That makes you trouble. That makes That's, you trouble. They're like, you're no, you don't get enough trouble. So I, I like doubled my detentions for like yeah. the month. I was like, oh, I got problems. But um, it was, uh, but yeah, so we ended up doing that. And it was just like, it's such an amazing, yeah, it's so quiet. Yeah. And it's so, uh, it's like, you know, you get the air conditioner, you get the computer hum, you got all these hums you don't even hear anymore. You get out there and it's just yeah. like dead quiet. I was amazed. Uh, I, I was last Christmas, Christmas before last, I went out to the Everglades. Uh, uh, there's a part, in, maybe it's the, just a very s- north east tip of the Everglades that hits Palm Beach County. And there's a, uh, I, I want to say Loxahatchee. I'm not too sure what the name of it, the, because they're all, they all end with the word Hatchie. But right, right. Uh, uh, there's a place where I go, I go there every time. And if you go there right at dusk, uh, and as the uh, sun goes down, the noise level goes up. Uh, all mm-hmm. the frogs, the birds, they all, and it's just became like a wall of sound. Uh, and just like you said, I guess you're so used to hearing, uh, here in LA, it's helicopters. In New York, it was uh, ambulances and fire trucks and all this stuff. You just hear all these noises. Then all of a sudden, when all that goes and you start hearing nature, and I, I honestly felt a mild panic because it's like, what do I do? I didn't know what to do with all these noises. I couldn't take them all in at one time. So I'm trying to, every time I go back, I try to hit that, that particular part at sundown to see if I can capture that wall of sound again. If I had to give West Palm Beach a sound, it would be Kawasaki motorcycles (laughs) ripping down the highway I mean, yes. who doesn't yeah. know that sound? That has yeah. I've grown up with that sound. I can hear it, yeah. and I'm I'm like I don't know. I'm maybe a mile away from the highway, and it's just yeah, yeah. every day, every night, you're gonna hear it. One last question for you, and this is sort of an improv question. I like to end every episode with this. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you for being here, by the way. Um, uh, like welcome. I said, just you you're so giving of your time, um, and your uh, you're a great teacher too, and performer, which everyone can see in your performances. Um, but, but but we'll talk about that at the end here. Last question: what uh, What would you say you take from improv? What has improv done for you in your everyday life when it comes uh, to making chowder, watching birds? What would you say you bring uh, with you? I think it was somebody who said it to me a long time ago, uh, and it's like if you want to be a good improviser you need to be a good person, uh, uh, which means your character should be a good person, which means quit fighting. So it was a philosophical way to get me to quit fighting in scenes. And I took it more like, I'm a horrible person. Uh, and it's just like <laughs> in real life, uh, I'm a lot angrier than I am on stage. So to me, it's trying to bring that into my real life. Like, do, do the right thing, be good. And especially during these very conflicting times, uh, where it's very easy to hate on on the other side of trying to accept that uh, uh, we're all good people at heart, even though we're not showing that. Uh, so it is really, and maybe it's age as well, but it's really calmed me down. I'm less angry than I was. Uh, try to open that up. So uh, improv lessons are life lessons, and then life lessons are improv lessons, and it's that cycle uh, in between. Uh, and I don't know who said this, so I'm going to say I made this up. But, yes. Uh, there's a philosophy I'm working on now where everybody is 20% wrong and 20% right on everything they believe. Uh, and then all that stuff in the middle is what it really is. You know what I mean? So, and I, yeah. I got that from improv and I don't know where. So like I said, when I forget who told me that, I'll just say it's me. Right. Uh, but it does ease up on my anger. 
Uh, and I think I'm less angry than I used to be because of improv. Well, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, Billy, thank you so much again. Um, people can find the Chowder Report on your Facebook page. Yeah, I got to do a new Well, I'm going to do a, a turtle bean soup report will be <laughs> my next <laughs> report whenever that comes up. I will link to the Chowder Report uh, yeah. so people can check it out. And uh, I definitely want to get from you the uh, I will I will reach back out to you before we, we launch with this to get the recipe possibly and the video on the on the chatter report of the uh, the turtle bean soup would yeah. be great. Oh, it's got to wait for the temperature to change. I think we're going to get a hit the 90s uh, this week and then the week after it goes down to the 60s. That's when the chowder comes out. I love it. I love it. Very I like I like that report on the weather, you know. I feel like they should report on the weather too, but no, chowder reports are probably yeah. where it's at. That's where uh, it's at. I know. I, I I hate to deflect, but have you heard? Uh, uh, here in L.A., we have the weather report by uh, David Lynch. No. Have you ever heard this? I l- listen. It's on NPR every day. Uh, and at first, I, I was like, "What the fuck is this?" He doesn't know <laughs> anything about the weather. He doesn't have to. He's David Lynch. He just, he just looks outside his... I'm sure he's at a house in Malibu somewhere. And he goes, Today's a little cloudy. Sunshine are coming soon. Making me think of... And then he just talks about a song that he's heard. And then the DJ plays that song. And I've become addicted to it. David Lynch's The Weather Report. It's my favorite thing. I will have to check that out. It's amazing yeah, what we'll watch. It's amazing yeah. what we'll watch now. Uh... Awesome. Well, yeah, Billy, thanks so much. And all of you, thank you for listening. I hope we made you hungry. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Good eats. If you're here for improv, go away. This is Comedy and Improv with Andy.